Hey guys, and welcome back. And this week we're going to try this again. I'm going to use a different photo. And we're going to do this whole reference. Uh, we're going to draw an orange again. And I'm working on translucency and contrast and all that kind of good stuff. Things that completely missed out of the last video. We're going to try it again. Uh, one thing that I want to show you guys, this is this is the final piece last time. And you can see I put a wax coating on it. I just used cold wax and I, just, and I rubbed it in. You just need, when you do this, you just need a really thin, thin layer. And you can see the nice shine. And then when it's once it's dry or buffed after a couple of days, you just take some cotton cloth and you rub it out. Buff it a bit and then you get a nice, nice shine. Nice protective coating. And you can see, I'm not sure how well it shows up on camera, but in real life, it just adds a depth to this. It just really accentuates the, the subject. It's really, really cool. So that's what the kind of thing that we're going to be covering today. Not so much the application of the wax, although that's probably something that I'm going to want to demonstrate uh, shortly. So I hope you stick around for that. So go ahead and like this video if you've enjoyed it, if you learned anything. Uh, subscribe to this channel and share it with those who you think could benefit from these fundamentals. I'm Kendall Stump and welcome to the Stump Project. Okay, so this week I'm going to be working with, uh, continue to working with the Conte of Peri. Uh, it's the, the sketching crayon. So this is the, the black. This is, this is the kind of the packaging that it comes in. You can get bigger packages, you know, more of them if you need it. But they come in these, in these sticks. It's more of a uh, compressed charcoal. Uh, you see, it's still just a little bit messy just by holding it just for a couple of seconds. Um, and the and I also have the the white version as well. Um, I'm also going to be using probably uh, white charcoal, a little bit different than that. But this I use this for a little bit more control, a little bit if I if I want finer lines, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I've got a a regular charcoal pencil that I will use as well for this for similar in black uh lastly uh kneaded eraser you can see this is really dark it's because of uh it picks up charcoal it's removed charcoal and it works really really well for adding highlights to some of those darkened areas that you that you already missed and of course this is a, a sanding board this is a board that's got different sheets of sandpaper attached to it and you rub your charcoal pencil or your piece of charcoal on here you can rub you know to get to a, a finer point I also use a smudge stick. You can see this side is, is relatively clean and this side is dark. I use this side to blend charcoal, this side to blend the white charcoal. And you can clean this by, by rubbing it on here. And just keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. And then the, the charcoal will come off and you will, this is just rolled paper essentially. So it'll, it'll clean this up and you can use this as a nice, a nice blending tool. Um, I should have links to uh, virtually all of these things uh, down in the description. So go ahead and check those out if you're interested. It does help this channel. So I appreciate any and all of that. So how do we set this up? So I'll put up here in the corner, I'll put up uh, the reference photo that I'm using. Um, use references, Use take a photo yourself. Uh, if you don't want to go online and, and search for something just to practice. Um, <clears throat> but but use use references don't don't draw from what you think you know draw from what you see so it's a very important distinction that, that a lot of people kind of miss so again that when we're putting together our composition i like to divide my my workspace into uh into a grid and uh, we'll divide it up into into thirds something something like like that and remember these points around in here, these are your points of interest. These are the points that you generally wanna focus on. Uh, today, I think our composition is going to focus more on, uh, on the vertical lines rather than on these points of interest specifically. So remember when you're doing this, uh, it's all about shape. So don't think, well, I can't draw. Well, yeah, you can. If you can draw a box, you can draw a table. If you can draw a circle, you can draw an orange. So, I mean, let's, let's stop making excuses and let's just go ahead and do some of this stuff. So one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of plan out where I want everything to go. 
So according to the, and I'm going to use landmarks. So according to the, uh, to the reference photo, we know that um, it doesn't go clear to the end. We know that the top of the table is a little bit lower than what it is on the side. So it goes straight across, yes, but it goes at, at an angle. There's an angle to the photo. So it would be something to this nature, right? And and the angle is something similar to that. One of the things that you can do when you're trying to figure out angles is take your drawing tool, whether it's charcoal or whether you're painting or whether you're drawing or what, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you if you hold your 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 utensil up to whatever it is that you're wanting to to draw or capture, and you turn it to match the angle that you're looking at, then you just bring it over to your paper and you just draw that angle. So that's a great way. I captured that one pretty good. So it's a great way of uh, of capturing of capturing angle. Uh, we can I can demonstrate another point in time uh, how to how to use your tool to to measure. You used to see artists, you know, stereotypically hold their thumb up right when 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 they're when they're painting. Or you've seen I'm sure you've seen pictures or seen in cartoons or what have you. Well, it's a legitimate form of measurement, and you can use that to to help place uh, place everything. Uh, we're not necessarily doing that today, but uh, I can demonstrate it in the future. Um, this X for me right now just represents this is all going to be dark right here. So I'm just I'm just blocking a lot of this stuff in. You see, I put the bottom of the table in here right here too because on the photo it actually goes lower. Um, I'm drawing lower than what the photo actually is. And maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not. See what I did right there was, uh, I, I held my piece of charcoal up to the angle uh, that I was trying to capture. And I saw that it comes clear down here. So by the time that I'm, perp I'm, I'm perpendicular with the, or parallel with the above corner, it brings me right down here, actually where I wanna be. So forget that. But this, this, this remains that this is still going to be dark. So I'm not too worried about that. Let me go in that direction. And so this is less of a table and more of a... More of a cutting board, I think. The orange on the photo comes probably up to here somewhere. And it's a big oval. Now it doesn't come all the way down here to the bottom, the probably somewhere around in here, over halfway. Trust in the process, trust in, I mean, you, you might put something on there and and you're like, oh, it's, it's too big, it's gonna be too big. Like, well, is it, I mean, just go ahead and, and put it on there, put it on you think it's gonna be. And you can always adjust it later, it's not that big of a deal. But sometimes you put it on there and it ends up working out just exactly the way that it's supposed to be. So here I just drew in an oval. Obviously this oval needs to be adjusted. The This side of the, of the orange is actually a little bit higher. So we just mark it up. So you see, obviously, I mean, I've got this big thick black line right there. We're gonna take care of it, so don't worry. We can we can box in where the peel is. And that's all that this is. Circle, I drew a uh, trapezoid, gave some depth to it, essentially drew it twice. You get the front edge. And make this Make this your own too. Um, I, I encourage you not to try to do a, a photographic uh, copy 
of something like this. Uh, you, the only, especially if you're just starting out, the only thing that you're going to do is uh, frustrate yourself. Uh, you don't want to do that because it's never going to turn out the same. Uh, just do it in your own style. Try to capture what you see, though. So, and use landmarks. So here we know the the edge of the peel that I blocked in is right here. We know that this orange piece that's going to be here in front is a little bit higher than that peel. So use use landmarks. We know that it, it comes around here, and this bottom edge of this slice is a little bit underneath where it starts to dip right here. Just to, to demonstrate a little bit, you can see how the kneaded eraser can come in and pick some of that stuff up. Now, it's not going to get rid of all of it, 100% um, of it, but it, it'll lighten it up and it will remove all the excess so that when you go in and apply the lighter color, the, the lighter values, um, it, it will help those pick up a little bit better. Okay, so now we'll put in the other one. And you can see as we're as we're putting this composition in based off of the photograph, it's lining itself up on those vertical lines that we put in there. So it's very important to kind of plan out your composition. Uh, we know that this other piece here, see this is, watch, this is gonna change. We know that this piece here is a little over halfway up, maybe three quarters of the way up of this orange. So and I'm also basing measurement on the distance here. So I know that this is gonna to be too short. And follow through in your line. So we, as this comes through here, we know the bottom of it is gonna be like right around in this area right here. So in order to make that match up, just draw through, draw through your existing piece. We're going to cover it up. It's going to blend out. You'll never, ever see it. You'll never know that it's there. So these are all fundamentals that people often say, oh, I can't draw a stick figure. Well, you never, you were never instructed properly how to draw a stick figure. It's, everything is shapes. Like I said, if you can draw a circle, you can draw many, many, many things. Like that. That's kind of planned out. Now, like I said, this is going to have to change a little bit because we know that right now the top of it is, of this one is coming here and you can see from the photograph that the top of the orange should probably be up here somewhere. And then you just, you just block it in like that. That's what your smudge stick does. Again, it's what your kneaded eraser does. Just getting rid of some of the extra so when we do start blending, we don't we can we can maximize the, the white because this is there's a lot of light color or light value that comes that happens over here. In the photo, uh, we know also that a right around uh, 
right around this area straight through and down it gets really really dark so we can block that in And this is a a uh, Conte de per, uh, Perry, uh, drawing crayon, sketching crayon. Uh, it's a little bit different than it's more of a compressed charcoal or compressed pastel. Um, you you have to apply a bit more pressure uh, than you would say a traditional willow charcoal um, or or which is what this is here uh, or, or a vine charcoal which is also something similar you have to apply a little bit more pressure uh, the other stuff will just it'll come up with no problem but it'll, you'll also have much a much bigger mess that's not to say that this stuff isn't messy it is but it's it's not not near as messy as as the other stuff and so I'm I'm blocking in the background right now and this is going to allow me the opportunity to kind of refine my silhouette or my outer edges. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're working with, with this stuff, and right now I've got the edge of my, of my paper taped down, so I'm going to have a nice clean border. If you're working with a larger piece and say you, you have your a, a big piece of paper, like say I was working on this board here, but I wanted to... to uh, just tape off my board, my boundary of my illustration, and I wanted the rest of the paper to be white. A lot of time when you're working in charcoal, all this dust will fall down onto your paper and will leave dust marks and streaks. Um, when you peel your tape away, you have a clean line and still the streaks underneath. Something to keep in mind, if you're going to use an oversized sheet of paper and just work on a small area of it, um, I would recommend taping off the entire bottom of the, not necessarily taping, but put a piece of paper up there and tape off, tape it off just to cover it up, just to help, uh, keep that area safe and clean. Remember I said this is all going to be dark. So this is the front of the table and this is all going to be dark. I'm not too worried about light and shadow at this point. I am blocking in just some value we will adjust it as we work on it one of the things i like to do when i'm i'm blocking in color like this is i will i will turn my my charcoal you can see i'm starting to get a nice tip on it so that's going to allow me to use that in focused areas later on if i need to get uh, a thinner line a thinner more controlled line putting the background in is often the most time-consuming uh, aspect of your of your illustration at least that's what I found um, blocking in this stuff is almost tedious but I mean it's something that needs to be done obviously it's going to accentuate the entire the entire piece it's going to bring everything forward it's going to it needs to be done it, it adds so much it allows you to like I said accentuate your refine your your, your silhouette get your edges where you need them to be Take a little bit of time doing this it will pay out so that that part's in and then like i said the rest of it's still dark it's still black but it's not quite as black so i'm just going to go a little bit lighter and don't worry about that transition right there we will address that in a minute so i'm just going to put this darkness up here i'm just going to try not to get quite as dark as what it was below and i can always add some uh some white to that uh later on too when we're just trying to refine everything I like to work on an easel when I'm doing my, my charcoal illustrations. Uh, I think the biggest reason, now my arm does get tired for sure, that's not a joke. Um, but one of the biggest benefits of doing this is it keeps my hand off of the paper. And as you can see, my finger is just, just looking, just holding this piece of charcoal and how it maybe it grazes the, the paper every now and again. I'm picking up a lot. So just imagine if you uh, are accustomed to just working on a flat table, which would keep your charcoal dust more controlled. You're also gonna be putting your hand right in it and it's gonna be a little bit of a, 
a little bit of a challenge to kind of keep that area clean, your hand clean, your picture clean. So uh, give us a try. All right, so now we kind of have that blocked in and it looks a bit of a mess. Uh, I'm gonna take my smudge stick. And right away, you see how that just fills in the gaps. It makes the dark nice and even. And the really cool thing, or really cool thing, it's a benefit, it's a definite benefit. Um, it you're, you're pretty much loading this tip up like you would a paintbrush. So now I've got all of this pigment on the end of my of my smudge stick and I can transplant that. Uh, example, um, we know that this is a, a, a wood texture and maybe you just want to put in some, some wood grain. I'm just lightly using the existing pigment on my smudge stick just to kind of fill in some of this value. If, I, if I'm working on an area and I decide that I need more, I just go back to my, my dark areas or even press a little bit harder. And you can get more pigment off of, off of your stick. And this just gives us this is just going to give us a good uh, foundation. We haven't started adding a lot of details or anything yet. We're just kind of just working on on areas, refining them little by little. That's really all that this is. You see, I'm just bringing that dark right up into this other dark that I already have. And it's just a smidge lighter than what was down below. And if I want it lighter yet, yeah, like I said, I can come through after a bit and add some of the white, the white charcoal and, and we'll, we can lighten that up even more. I try to change up the direction of my stroke too. Like you, you notice I'm always turning my hand and uh, I don't want my strokes to be uniform going all this way like this. I want some to go this way, some to go this way, some to go this way. I'm putting in some value that I know that this table has. So I'm just using some of the residual uh pigment on my on my smudge stick i'll put in some of these lines and in, in perspectives and just kind of keep that in mind as you're putting these marks down that that the the grain of the table goes in a certain direction so like on this end it goes in in this angle and this end it goes in more more of this angle so it's just perspective, and, and then we just try to meet that as we come. We continue to make those lines until they till they meet on the other side, right? So as the angle shifts, and we, of course we can keep in mind shadows. We know that there's going to be a block of shadows under here. And one thing it's really good to do is work on work on everything at once. Uh, don't get bogged down in one area. Bounce around your your illustrations. Goes for if you're if you're painting, uh, you're making a toneless painting, you're making abstract painting, you're making whatever whatever kind of painting you're making. Illustrations. Uh, work on the whole thing uh, at one time. This will keep. Uh, everything uniform. And then I'm just 
bringing this out, softening the edge. Because as in some areas, if you notice in some of these areas, as the shadow comes out, it diffuses, it breaks up. Whereas other areas like over here, when it's where it's up against more of a of a of a hard of a high uh, highlight, uh, there's more of a hard edge. I'm going to start to block in a little bit of the, uh, the interior shadow. So we have some stuff on the peel here. We know that it wraps around the bottom of the orange. We know that there's a section right through here that's it gets fairly dark. And this is kind of a mid-tone shadow. Obviously, um, we can see some darker bits, so we can come in here with the actual, the actual charcoal and and darken that up as needed. But just blocking in some stuff, getting some value on the paper. Now this is uh, just a, a toned, toned gray. It's from Strathmore. Uh, these are, I believe, it's nine by twelve. Yeah, nine by twelve. It comes in a ream of fifty sheets, uh, relatively inexpensive. So, but and you can pick them up at Walmart or any other, you know, art supply store, Michaels, what have you. Okay, just working on some overall values, overall tones. I know that there's going to be a highlights area right around the edge of this, so I'm I'm just kind of saving some saving some room for that. Know that there's going to be some highlights over here too, but I want some some dark behind it, so we'll be able to go on top of that. We know that we have some mid-tone value in here. Okay, so I think it's probably a pretty good start for blocking in some shadow. Now let's work on the other side. So we're going to take our, our, our white and we'll start blocking in some highlights. And then we start going to bounce back and forth. And I'm looking at the, the not the detailed part of the highlights as just yet. I just want to get the, uh, the shape, the, like you think of the, of the, of the highlights as shapes as well. And they come in certain areas. And this is where a nice contrast comes in. You put on a nice background and you start using the highlights and you just lift and that contrast of where that little bit of orange um, membrane sinew underneath there is just gonna pop out right against that dark background. And so there's a lot of detail that just happens because you, you've you worked in these stages, you worked in these steps. You've established some stuff and it allows you just to move forward without having to worry about all of the detail. Now, this is gonna mix in here and that's exactly what I want because I'm working on value. I'm not working on the, uh, the minute details at this point. So I'm just giving myself something here to work with. I'm using the, the light side of my smudge stick and I'm going to start building up some of this. Now the closer I get to the edge, the harder, the more white I want it to be. So I'm not going to disturb that too much. And then I would keep building this up until I get the, uh, the appropriate value that I want. So I don't want all of this to just to be stark white. And just like the other, just like with the dark, you can transplant some of this color too. I kind of left it off and it was just a point of refining and, um, and this is this is what came of it. 
uh, the, the veins and the organic structure that's up here in the orange is just a lot of scribble marks. These kinds of things, especially with charcoal, when, uh, you, when, you, when you get up really close to it, it kind of loses its, its, uh, its sharpness just because of the nature of the utensil that you're using. Well, these things are really built on value and they're, and they're most often appreciated from a little bit of a distance. That way, uh, the, the, the different kinds of edges and stuff that uh, may be more loose or rough aren't really noticed and don't detract from the, from the piece itself. So you can see um, we faded a little bit off here, we blended here, added highlights, and kept building on it. One of the things that I did do was I gave it a spray with a workable fixative to help seal everything. Now, I know we talked in the past about how workable fixative will come in here to the whites and it'll make them, uh, it kind of absorbs the liquid and it kind of pushes them back. Uh, it's particularly prevalent uh, when you use things like, like chalk. Um, the Conte de Puri, the, the drawing crayon, um, it still happens, but not nearly, not nearly as bad. But what it does do, uh, it, it, because it gets pushed back, it allows you to go back in on top of it and kind of reinforce some of those areas that you wanted to, to emphasize, thus creating layers and depth in your piece, which I think is really, really cool. So I, I did, I sprayed it down. Uh, so it, it helped to seal in the, 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 the blacks. You can see there's still some on my finger right there. So it maybe it needed a, another coat. Um, but that's okay. It'll, it'll, it will be fine for what we're going to do today. Cause what we're going to do today is seal this. So we don't have to worry about this anymore. So we'll, um, we're, we're going to dab a, a layer on there. And then as we kind of get it worked in, we'll be able to smooth it out. And, and part of the key to this is getting a nice thin layer. So first things first, let's go ahead and take the uh, the paper off, or the tape off of the paper, and we'll, we'll get a better idea what this final project looks like. Then we'll move over to my table and we'll start applying some wax. But remember when, you, when you're taking off tape, you, you want to pull at a, uh, a harsh angle away from your illustration. And that's just because if the tape happens to catch on the paper, you won't go slow when you're doing this. There's no rush. Here we are, final piece. That looks pretty good. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is this is stuff that I'm going to be using. Uh, cold wax medium from Gamblin, and you can use. Uh, I haven't used any other brands, but uh, I'm sure that I'll get into it. Uh, you don't need a whole lot. Now, the first time I used this stuff, uh, I, I used quite a bit and I put a thick layer on my on my illustration. Um, I do use rubber gloves when when working with this stuff. Uh, I just it's a chemical. You just want to be safe. Uh, I get an amount of wax on my finger. And then the first thing I do is I start dabbing it on, uh, especially the, the, the white areas. because I know those are gonna be the most susceptible uh, to get pushed back uh, when using Fix-A-Tip. And, and and uh, when a lot of times when you do use Fix-A-Tip, um, you wanna go back and touch things up. When you touch things up, you don't necessarily wanna seal it again. Um, So that, so that, uh, so that white may be a little bit more raw or unprotected. 
So all I'm doing, I'm just kind of dabbing on top of that, of that stuff right there. Uh, we'll come back to it. And get it all worked in, but I'm just dabbing a bunch on here, as you can see. And then, Now this is uh, paper, just regular paper, uh, toned paper nonetheless, but it is just regular paper. And when you get the wax on, because it is kind of a, a I wanna say a liquid, uh, it's gonna seem like it's making your paper wet and discoloring it. And, and when it dries, it dries, it dries fine. Just trying to get an even coating on on every part of it. When you're not using your wax, it's a good idea to put the, the cap back on it. The wax will cure in here if you don't keep it sealed. So at this point, we're just smearing this around, trying to get an even coverage. on everything and I'm trying to keep my, my edges clean I'm not too worried about this out here if I were to frame this uh, it's probably going to get matted uh, clear out to that point so I mean it's I'm not too worried if uh, any of the charcoal wasn't set perfectly with the fixative not that big of a deal But I am just applying just a little bit of pressure. I'm trying to get an, a nice, thin, even coating. When it goes on, it's going to go on uh, when the wax goes on. The wax is going to go on uh, cloudy. Uh, and you're going to think that you're doing something wrong or your illustration is ruined. And that's that's not the case. And what we'll do is once we get all of this applied on here and it's nice and thin, I may have to add a little bit more over here on the edge. Uh, we're just going to let it set and cure and it can take uh, 24, 48 hours or so. Uh, so once we get that done, <clears throat> once that cures, uh, we'll come back and we'll, we'll buff it. Because it's just going to go on as a, uh, um, a matte finish. Uh, initially. Cold wax is just so versatile. You can use it for many, many things. Uh, you've seen me use it uh, in paintings uh, as a just a, a textural medium, like a, in a, an impasto kind of kind of thing. Uh, in a, you know, you can use it obviously as a sealer as well. I'm applying just a little bit of pressure, trying to move in the direction of my strokes when I, I think that it's needed just in case there's any smearing that would happen to go on with the charcoal at least until I get it uh, established and then then I can just smear it in and try to make sure that it's even but you really do need to seal it with or spray with some fixative initially if not this will be you you will push around your charcoal and make a bit of a mess with it but it needs to have a starting point right then like I said some of the whites that's why you want to dab it on some of the whites um, don't don't want to seal properly. You just want to make sure that you take some precaution to help protect that. And then, yeah, like I said, initially this is going to seem cloudy. At this point, you just want to get you just want to get your project covered evenly and thinly. You don't need it too don't want it too too thick at all. So then, after a while, once you get it rubbed in initially, just going to go over it. And this and at this point too. Um, you could probably add texture if you wanted to add texture. You can see there's just a film over top of it right now. And we're just gonna have to let that set and let that, uh, let it cure. I'm trying to just 
work out any extra texture and bump unless you want texture if you want texture that's fine then you can probably even use a uh, a, a paint brush to just come and put in paint strokes or brush marks what have you you can try that just to see what it looks like just a clean paint brush You can probably go in any direction that you want to. You can probably go, uh, I'm just using like a random mark across the entire thing, but you could potentially go just in the direction that you originally uh, developed your illustration. You follow your, your brush marks and brush strokes of that original piece. I haven't tried this before, but I mean, it looks like it could be pretty cool. So, I mean, it's giving me initial, an initial uh, feeling of success, but we'll see, we'll, we'll just play this out and see what happens. I mean, I see some benefits in doing this already. There were some high points Uh, in the wax itself that the brush is, is kind of uh, dispersing and flattening out and, and thinning out the wax. You can kind of see like right here there's a little bit that the, uh, the brush picked up. You can see on the end picked up some extra bits. Just wipe off my brush. It's kind of helping me st keep it uh, keep it thin. Again, and that's if you want that extra texture, I mean, maybe that's a that's a good thing. I know you don't want those little balls that that just can accumulate. Make sure you get those off of there. It's going to be unwanted. I'm just transplanting some of the wax on my brush. Yeah, this is nice. It's really allowing me to, to push that wax around cleanly because I can brush off at the same you know just kind of see that little schmutz that's on there you can see it's on my brush you can either transplant that wax in that areas that other areas that may need it or I can just take my brush and just wipe it off There, that's pretty nice. It's it's interesting. Give me all that texture on there. We'll see how that looks when it's all dry, and we'll see what kind of effect that's actually going to have. So we'll come back to this in a couple of days, and we'll buff it out. And we'll see where it is from there. All right. See you in a minute. Okay, so it's cured and uh, ready for some some buffing. Now, some some sites will tell you that you can probably do this after two to four hours. I like to wait just a little bit uh, before I give it a, a, a rub down. 
So again, we took a, a paintbrush over this and we kind of textured it. I had never done that before, so I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to turn out. Uh, so you just take a, a cotton rag and you just burnish it. You can already see uh, the, the, sh the satin finish or so that's coming up right there compared to the rest of it, which is very matte. So I'm just gonna go over this entire thing. And you're not rubbing real hard, you're just, essentially, I, I believe it's just warming up the wax on the surface and it's just uh, kind of melting it under the friction to give it that, that shiny finish, satin-like finish. On one of my other pieces that I did, one of my first ones, that the banana, I experimented a little bit and, and I put the wax on a little bit too heavy. Uh, but I also took my heat gun to it just to see what it would do. And it does, uh, it gives it almost a super gloss finish. It really, it really does. I mean, if you're into, into that look, um, maybe give it a try, but I would experiment on some uh, stuff that you're not really attached to just in case it, it doesn't come out the way that you intended. Again, I'm not rubbing super hard. I'm just, just, just creating that friction. I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure. And what I'm noticing is, and I'll show you here in a minute. I don't know if you can see it from the uh, from the angle that I'm that we're that I'm showing you. Um, it's hitting the high points on the on the brush strokes. And it's what's leaving the, the texture, which is really, I think it's kind of cool. You kind of see that up, up in here. It's leaving that texture there, so it's kind of nice. Makes kind of a unique, a unique finish, something you might not um, expect from a, from a charcoal illustration. And at this point, you don't have to worry about smudging the uh, the charcoal it's already been sealed it's been sealed by this wax and that's the whole point of doing this there you go now you can see a nice set and finish over the entire thing. Your picture, your illustration has been uh, protected and sealed. And it's prepped for uh, whatever you want to, to do on top of that. Um, you, can, you can add color on top of cold wax as long as you treat it like an oil painting. So you, if you want to use this as an underpainting and you wanted to be sure that your charcoal pigment wasn't going to mix with the with your color um, you can use the cold wax seal your painting and then use uh, oil paint on top now don't use water-based paints um, water and wax obviously don't mix uh, you can use oil base and that will adhere and bond uh, should bond nicely um, if you want to use something, and I'll probably experiment with something like this in the future, if you want to use uh, an airbrush, uh, just dilute it. Uh, you, can, you can put air, um, oil paint through an airbrush, but it has to be diluted um, really, really well with um, mineral spirits uh, or turpentine, whatever it is that you want to use. Do a little bit of research on that just to find out what's good for you and your airbrush. And uh, you should be able to apply it as you normally might with a regular airbrush. So, um, as this is, I think this was a pretty good example of the things that you can do with some cold charcoal and cold wax and being able to seal it. And, uh, yeah, it looks, I think this turned out uh, pretty well. I think it was a successful, successful test. So again, if you uh, hope you like this video, uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Share it with those who you think might benefit 
from these fundamentals. And if you have any questions or want to see something specific, let me know. And I will see you next time.